Hi everybody! Welcome to Koi Channel. Today, we will be talking about new additions to our collection of petrified wood, a slab from Wyoming with tiny fossilized seed shrimp in it, a rare Rexoxylon from southern Africa, a primitive conifer wood worthia found in Zimbabwe, and a black centered piece from Indonesia. They all are distinct types of petrified wood and must-haves for any collection. If you want to learn cool information about the specimen and see how they look under a microscope or UV light, stay tuned. Let's start with a very special rock from a famous location known as Blue Forest. What's unusual about this particular specimen is that it also contains remnants of tiny animals, seed shrimp, hidden in the cracks of the wood. The scientific name is ostracods. Fun fact, parthenogenesis, or propagation by females only, is known for several species of modern ostracods. They also produce eggs that can withstand prolonged drying. Teeny tiny round white objects suspended inside the semi-transparent stone might have been those eggs. We also noticed puffy barrel-like structures in the specimen that look very much like termite droppings. The vast majority of the logs from this location are covered in petrified algae, an indication that, at one point in time, they were standing in the water. The thick layer of algae eventually dried and shrank, creating spaces that were filled with chalcedony, agate, and calcite. Occasionally, small creatures got trapped in the cracks and turned into stone as well. The algal layers sometimes have distinct stromatolite-like appearances, and might have been created by the cyanobacteria, which used to be called blue-green algae. The calcareous layer of the mineralized microbial coating is often removed during preparation of the samples using oxalic acid. This reveals the underlying agates of famous blue color, but in my view, makes the specimen incomplete. Here's a different specimen with the layer of petrified algae still intact. It has fragile edges, crumbling upon the touch and shedding little fragments. No wonder people want to get rid of the unstable external layer. This piece also has a few ostracods. After studying the well-preserved cellular structures, scientists determined that the blue forest petrified wood represents the pepper tree, or Chinook Cylon. The trunks are found at the depths of approximately one meter in a semi-arid and dusty Eden Valley, known for its long-lasting irrigation projects of the early 1900s. The common tool used by the prospectors to find logs is a metal probe, essentially a rod, which is pushed through the soil until it hits a rock. Then you can start digging, hoping that is the right kind of rock, because you may spend quite a bit of time and effort digging that hole. A similar probe, by the way, is also used by Florida's fossil hunters, looking for the right kind of river gravel containing shark teeth. The trees were growing in a swamp-like environment at the eastern edge of the large ancient lake Goshute, about 52 million years ago. Geologically, Blue Forest is related to the famous Green River Formation, where fossilized fish imprints are coming from. It was an area with huge lakes, there were volcanic fields nearby, and they were the source of volcanic ash falling down on the lakes periodically. This part of the lake was the great habitat not only for fish, predominantly catfish and suckers, but also reptiles like turtles and crocodiles. The word blue refers to the bluish hues of the dark chalcedony that can be found inside of this particular type of petrified wood. The color is due to the traces of elements such as titanium, iron, cobalt, and manganese. It is believed that the black color is associated with the remnants of organic material rich in carbon. The light brown spots are formed when the carbon was washed out by the groundwater. This is what collectors called bleaching. When you examine the microscopic structures of the wood itself, you will notice plenty of regularly spaced large holes among the tiny cells. It's a typical feature of hardwood, distinguishing it from the softwood. The holes are vessels and they function as pipes, running along the trunk to deliver water and nutrients. 
In softwood, all cells can do this, and therefore they look more uniform. In hardwood, it's done through the special vessels. The trees were flowering dicots, and they had berries like modern-day pepper trees. The streaks of yellow fluorescence are likely due to calcite formed in the cracks. With no extra radioactivity and a formal appearance resembling a black suit, this slab is gorgeous. Even though having ostracods is not exactly a unique feature for blue forest petrified wood, it is still quite rare and we are happy to have this piece in our collection. Now, let's move to a seed fern specimen, supposedly from Africa. It represents an unusual and cool-looking petrified wood called Rexoxylon. It was a Mesozoic arborescent seed fern. The botanists use the word arborescent for plants that have a tree-like appearance and thus have trunks. The slab we have is just a slice of a Rexoxylon trunk. It has a central pith, which in most specimens has a hole in the middle, surrounded by a dozen or so large vascular bundles that look like rounded structures. Within those bundles, the plant cells were organized in an ordered fashion. Long, well-defined rows of cells put tightly together like hair in a ponytail hairstyle. As a result, they reflect light like a bunch of well-brushed hairs. It creates a nice glimmering effect, often called chatoyancy. The word supposedly originates from French chatoyer, meaning shimmer or glitter. Similarly attractive light reflection is known for minerals like cat's eye and tiger's eye, as well as for some modern-day wood, curly maple and flame birch, for example. This particular type of seed ferns grew large and probably served as food and shade for various reptiles during the Triassic period. That's roughly 220 million years ago. As you probably know, the single landmass called Pangaea was the only continent at that time. This is why similar fossils are found not just in Africa, but also in South America and even Antarctica. When cut in a transverse cross-section and polished, Rexoxylons reveal an interesting structure of the stem. The cambial rings surrounding the central pith were the source of new cells. They formed centripetal xylem wedges that extend towards the pith and, on the other side, the wedges of centrifugal xylem. The wedges were separated by parenchymatose rays, a bit complicated anatomy, which can be described as polyxylic. Anyway, here's our next piece, a classical wood warthia, a primitive conifer from Zimbabwe. The typical features of this wood are multiple traces of side branches and greenish hues in coloration that likely came from the traces of chromium. Although, recent data implies that not all green-colored petrified wood gets color from chromium. In some cases, dark green hues may be due to the presence of iron. To explain the structure of Woodworthia's trunk, we found a trunk of a modern-day conifer, it was cut close to the branches and shows elongated rays in places where branches were growing inside of the trunk. When you look around the rim of the slab, you will notice distinct scars left after the branches fell off. Under the microscope, the rows of tracheids are clearly visible. Their function was to deliver the water with minerals in an upward direction. The continuous bright lines are rays that transport nutrients synthesized by the plant, to the central part of the trunk for storage. They are oriented horizontally. Our last piece selected for this video represents a trunk of a rainforest tree from Indonesia. Commercial digging for petrified wood on the islands of Java and Sumatra continues for over 30 years. The trees that were turned into stone now become a commodity and are sold as souvenirs. The fossils are being excavated with heavy machinery, in large quantities, at many of Indonesia's mining locations on the islands of Java and Sumatra. Most of the petrified trees from Indonesia belong to the Dipterocarpacea family. The name is a Greek word meaning two-winged fruit. They were quite abundant in swampy environment of Indo-Pacific Asia approximately 20 million years ago. 
This type of petrified wood is often described as tropical hardwood. Petrified wood is likely formed when massive amounts of volcanic ash cover the area. Although, swampy places with low oxygen environment could also facilitate wood petrifaction. The microscopic structure of this wood is characterized by the presence of large holes filled with silica. Those used to be vessels. The islets of smaller cells on the side of the vessels represent axial parenchyma aliform. It is believed that live cells of parenchyma perform metabolic duties in the wood. They serve as the storage place for carbohydrates, produce substances like resins and lignins. Parenchymal cells may also play a role in radial distribution of water and damage repair. We did check the radiation level, as always. Nothing alarming, not much higher than background radiation, meaning that it's safe to keep the specimens in our collection. Thanks for watching, by the way. If you are interested in fossils and natural curiosities, check out other videos. We have episodes about ammonites, trilobites, crinoids, shark teeth, cool microfossils, and fossil hunting field trips. Good luck in your adventures, and see you next time. Bye-bye!